Hey everybody, thanks for checking out episode two of Inside Allison's Wonderland. Today we have a special guest. Our guest is Keith Ferguson, voiceover artist extraordinaire. Unfortunately though, we've been at Keith's house for an hour, we've set everything up, and Keith is not here. So I, I think he's in a voiceover session right now, so hopefully when he gets out soon we can get started. Oh. Here you are. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Oh. No, I'm good. B.O. B.O. You're a voiceover artist. B.O. Artist. What does that stand for? What? We're going to need to cut. So, how did you first get started in voiceover? The short story is I took a V.O. workshop, got my agent, and went from there. Uh -huh. But the long story is I worked in TV production. Uh, for about six years and throughout that whole period I realized being exposed to different aspects of the industry that um, VO seemed like it would be ideal for me because I was always into playing characters and doing accents and doing impressions and whatnot. Um, so that's what inspired me to take some VO classes and I took actually two or three of them before I got my agent. But um, So what was your first voiceover job? This isn't typical. I think it was more of a fluke. It was a small little radio spot, but it was the first audition that I went on. Um, you booked your first audition? I did book my first audition. I'd yeah. say that's kind of a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, total fluke. <laughs> and I didn't work for three years after that. No, I'm kidding. So I went in for an interview. I met with her, and she was like, okay, you just think about it over the weekend. I think you'll want to sign with me. But in the meantime, I happen to get um, an audition in, and I want you to go on it, even though you're not technically with me. So I, it was a radio spot um, for, I think it was Hollywood Video, uh -huh. and I was doing a Keanu Reeves impression. Cause I don't remember the actual lines, but how I usually get into my character, my Keanu character, is uh, point break. I am an FBI officer of the law. You don't even know me. Get out of my face. So anyway, <laughs> I know, you just visualize and you're there, but then the voice only adds. So. Uh, <laughs> So I know you've done a lot of different characters throughout the years. Uh, what has been one of your most favorite parts to do? Well, probably the thing that I'm most known for, and thus probably the thing that I had the most fun on because it was a big deal, was a show called Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yes. And I played a character named Blue Regard Q Kazoo. Um, and he basically is like, he almost, he was an imaginary friend of a little boy and kind of served as the id of the little boy. So. He was very self-centered, but not in a mean way. He just was like a little kid. He didn't know that anybody, you know, might not be interested in only his agenda. Um, <laughs> and that kind of like thrust me into the animation world. But mostly the actual show itself was uh, what was most enjoyable about it, because it was fantastic writing. Craig McCracken, who does um, Powerpuff Girls and you know, a number of other things, but that's one of his mm -hmm. biggies. Um, was the creator with his wife, uh, Lauren Faust, and um, just the writers on the show, um, the animators on the show, it was just a real joy, the other actors on the show. Mm. Everybody was hilarious and, and fun and friendly, and it was just like, it was a great thing to go into. Found it, yeah. So, you wanna do a little blue for us? Blue Agar Kukasu was coming into the house. Oh, finally, do you know how long I have been stuck in this man's throat? And let me tell you, the things he ate, it ain't gourmet. Woo! Like, what inspired you to create that voice for the character? Well, it's funny, you know, one of the other characters that, not really a character, but one of the other voice matches that I do is Owen Wilson. And this spec came in for this character, Blue Regard Q Kazoo, um, that described him as a mischievous troublemaker, but one that you love, kind of in the vein of Owen Wilson. And when I went in, um, they liked what I was doing, they liked the tone of the character, but they kept saying, can you go a little higher? Can you go a little higher? And so what started out like this was really low, and, you know, he was kind of like a guy who, you know, was your best friend, and he really didn't mind if you had a problem with what he was doing because he knew he'd bring you around to the other end of his uh, ideas. Basically got higher and higher until I was all the way up here, and, yeah, it was kind of just a high uh, helium version of Owen Wilson. I was hoping maybe I could throw out a character to you. Sure, And sure. then maybe you could do the voice. Maybe I could. Okay. <laughs> um, Middle-aged British real estate agent. Well, why don't you come over here? I've got a lovely home for you to see. I think you'll love the window treatments. 
positively, positively lovely. Did I mention lovely as a big theme in this house? <laughs> Eight-year-old hyperactive alien. Alien, okay. Um... Oh my god, what, what planet are we gonna go to next? What planet are we gonna go to next? Uh, uh, can we go to that one with the blue stuff? Oh, oh, or the water, or, oh, oh, let's go to the one that's at the very, very end of the, end of the, end of the, end of the, what do you call it, solar system? God, I get so lost thinking about all these different parts of the universe. They'd probably direct me to calm down from doing that, so. A hippopotamus mm -hmm. that has um, a deviated septum. Ugh. Boy, I'll tell you something. One thing I love about swamps, plenty and plenty of birds. Do you have any like words of inspiration for our listeners out there that may be aspiring voiceover artists themselves? Yeah, definitely. Run! No, I'm kidding. Um, honestly, if you do what you love, and what you love is VO, then just find any way to do it. And I know it sounds trite, but there's something about it that's so true. I mean, there are a lot of reasons to get into a lot of different types of professions. And I think the most important one, and I think this works for any profession, is know what you can do and what you love doing when you can do it. And just keep going for it, keep going for it, because it's gonna be the only thing that makes you happy. And it's gonna be the only thing um, where if you don't do it, you'll always wonder why, you know, what would happen if I tried. So that's really all I can say. I mean, that's what I did. I didn't know what I was doing half the time. I mean, I was just trying to get into it. All I knew was, I know I can do this. I know I'd be good at doing this, and I know people would have fun working with me. And it took a, lot, a few years, and it was a struggle many of those years, but it was worth it. So. I can't believe you cut off my leg. <laughs> Me too. It was an accident, I swear. You're always cutting off my legs. You're lucky that they grow back within three weeks. I uh, know. That's very lucky. Because last time you cut off my legs, they didn't grow back. Um, that too was an accident. Well, I'm sorry about that. That's okay, Steve. I but, still love you. Well, hey, at least we have our love then. Yes, we do. Oh no, is that my machete? <sighs> Thanks for checking out episode two of Inside Alice's Wonderland. Tune in next time when we have a special guest, Kent Osborne, with us. Thanks for coming out, Keith Ferguson. My pleasure, my pleasure.